Okay, so uh, we're all uh, a little bit tired, but uh, uh, as Slobodan said, this uh, roundtable is quite important uh, uh, for us um, in working group four and the, uh, and the development of, of our future future issues and the future uh, work that uh, we expect to do in the next um, months. Um, so it's a kind of kind of also also in a very short uh, period. We just had the webinar. We have to deal with all the information and all these uh, uh, excellent presentations and and the uh, responses that were really marvelous. I, I, I think I have to say, and uh, uh, Slobodan, I'm sure he, he, he agrees that the our idea of the webinar with the, the projects and the discussions uh, with the respondents about the projects worked uh, uh, marvelously. Yeah. I think that uh, everybody is, uh, 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 has to be congratulated for the generous time that was spent to build this webinar and to the attentive and very close reading of the projects, which was, uh, I think, uh, fantastic. Um, well, uh, to maybe to start the discussion, and it would be great to hear from the several working groups how the field work uh, and the webinar that uh, uh, we just uh, 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 um, uh, were attending, how this idea of the field work can evolve in terms of the several perspectives from the several working groups. Um, it's a kind of very difficult task to deal with so many fields of knowledge. And, and uh, me and Slobodan really tried to select uh, uh, both the projects and the respondents with a very wide uh, uh, and open uh, uh, integration of uh, uh, different uh, perspectives and uh, different fields of knowledge. Uh, but somehow uh, 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 it, will, it would be important to, to understand because I think, I don't know, uh, Slobodan, if you agree with me, that the thematics and the projects really were connected. Well, there are a lot of projects that could uh, uh, be uh, uh, related with, uh, with, the, with the teams. I'm thinking, for instance, of Isabella's project is as much as integration and and sharing as it is as a as a, um, uh, artistic and curatorial project, uh, but somehow uh, it would be very interesting to know uh, uh, your perspective on 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 the um, on the webinar and first impressions because it cannot be much more than that. Uh, finally. Uh, uh, what uh, 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 we were thinking also, it's uh, on the elephant in the room, and the elephant in the room is called mid-sized cities. It's uh, really something that uh, maybe we will have to discuss soon. Uh, uh, also, in the next webinar, uh, Lauren and Carlos are already promising to explode the repository of methods and the possibilities of, of, uh, 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 of the methods in terms of the, um, of the research within the network. So uh, uh, somehow, I, I don't know, uh, Slobodan, you want to add something before? Well, yes, uh, actually, uh, I understand how I understand this uh, uh, webinar. Basically, this webinar is a kickoff of work of working group four. Uh, of course, it's not very, uh, very uh, accurate time to start uh, uh, field work, <laughs> since <laughs> most of us are having uh, trouble of uh, basically um, do everyday uh, routines and not travel and uh, research and be connected with uh, uh, distant places. Uh, but, uh, but in a way, the, the working group four uh, challenge is to connect theoretical, methodological, uh, group with fieldwork, but also to connect connect different backgrounds of participants and their understanding of what fieldwork is. So it's, it's uh, that's why that's why uh, today webinar was focused on projects. 
uh, is an, uh, because projects were in a way how I understand uh, anchoring, anchoring point in, in uh, which we can all overlap. Uh, 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 because uh, many of us are coming from different background. Uh, we work on the, the topics, meaning from appropriation and integration. But basically, all of us are having different. Uh, we are using different methodological approaches in 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 uh, in uh, our research. Uh, many of them are coming from a different uh, uh, disciplinary uh, formats that we are uh, that we are all part of. So the challenge for the further development of field work uh, as part of cost action is uh, to find a way to articulate field work. So. Uh, what to do next. Of course, we are all positive that uh, this COVID situation will end up uh, in hopefully half a year from now. And hopefully uh, from mid-summer, um, we can be more free to, 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 to go outside <laughs> from our homes, not just, not just from our countries, from our, our homes, and then be prepared uh, how we are going to organize uh, uh, field work. That's, that's the thing. So I'm seeing this, uh, this, uh, this webinar just as a start, just as a start. That's why we're inviting, actually that was the idea with the first call and basically this webinar should be a seminar as part of the exhibition in Porto and discussions in Porto, which is supposed to, uh, to, to, to be in, in uh, October, in November but everything is postponed. So that's why uh, uh, my understanding of the webinar is uh, just a preparation for the uh, work that should come. I would really appreciate if somebody could comment on, uh, yes, Klaske. Any yes, well, thank, thank you very much. Uh, well, well, everyone and, and Slovenan and Luis for organizing this. I think uh, indeed it has been a, a long but great day with a very nice, variety of, of presentations and, and responses, touching upon very different layers actually of our cost action. Um, on the one hand, showing projects and investigations about real places across Europe. Um, so in that sense, it has been also a bit of a, you know, expanding our map and, and seeing what is going on in Riga, in Porto, in uh, Limerick, and really across uh, different uh, places in Europe. It has also been about a number of themes of sharing, performing and mapping of, of integration, appropriation and meaningfulness and trying to see how these themes actually relate together and what are the cross connections. Um, and also, I think there have been a number of themes that uh, um, kind of connected through the different, uh, the different sessions. Um, there was, for instance, this theme of port cities that suddenly uh, was, was quite present, but also, of course, communities and limits, but also the, the relation between text and image. Um, for the, um, I think, for the, for the future of, of the working group, there's, there's um, and, and of the role of fieldwork, there's a number of topics that, that we could discuss, and one, I think, also has to do with the kind of um, to put it in kind of academic terms is outputs, research output that we see from this. Of course, we've been working with um, journal uh, issues and, and, and booklets and, and so on, but I think this field work could also require other types of uh, communication. We have been thinking, of course, of uh, exhibitions and some of the projects already had exhibitions uh, like uh, Eva's project at the workshops, so there's the Limerick project, there was Almada, which was not presented today, but which also came with an exhibition by Luis. Uh, so somehow an exhibition seems also a, a form of output that also reaches to, um, um, to local communities and, and local stakeholders. And, and thinking of what these kind of outcomes are and how we can connect with these key actors, as I think Mate so beautifully uh, addressed at the end of his presentations, like who are the key actors that we actually want to connect to? And what is the kind of um, uh, um, uh, knowledge that we can share and that uh, can help communities to, uh, um, well, to develop uh, um, meaningful projects. So I think that is one of the topics that we should discuss today, like how to um, deal with these ideas of what can be the outcome. Um, and another 
topic that I, I would like to discuss is how all these presentations and projects in very different ways um, relate to writing. Of course, our, our action is called Writing Urban Places, and there have been very different kinds of writing present in these, uh, um, in these presentations. There was, of course, the, the topic of the local stories that are activated or that are read or mapped by uh, the presentation of Juan this morning, uh, Isabella, the local stories of the, of the uh, uh, town in Italy and how they are uh, interpreted and then uh, reinvented with the inhabitants. Uh, but also the local stories of Riga by the presentation of Dacia. So this kind of reading of, um, of the local stories. But there have also been other kinds of stories like Kristen's presentation with these narratives that combine very strongly uh, photography and, uh, and, and, uh, and text and partly text also by from the archives or from uh, current inhabitants and Matei's photo story where also the, the photo and the narrative are, are very much combined. Um, there were the more fictional forms of writing. Uh, Fatma's presentation of the, this uh, semi-fictional narrative of the traveler in Izmir that takes us to other um, uh, times and, and, and makes us um, evoke the experience of, of other people, but also the presentation of, of Sophie and Italo and Willy with um, the, the kind of fictional character sketches that they made of, of these cities, but also the interviews. Uh, and then, of course, there's the stories of the communities that were explored through the questionnaires with, with Pablo, with, uh, with Eva. Um, the, how people exchange stories, as in the presentation with, with Anna. Uh, and then, of course, there's the actual writing on the streets with, with the street art. So there are many different kinds of writing. And I think this is also something, well, perhaps also together with uh, Working Group 3, like how are these different modes of dealing with narratives? Um, how are they productive for these uh, fieldwork projects? And how is writing actually um, used in these projects. Sorry, it was a very long, long comment, but just some observations. Uh, Jorge, you were, you were, you were, oh, okay, sorry, yes. Yes, I, I just wanted to tap into something that Clasca already mentioned, which was uh, the relevance, the pertinence and the opportunity of this uh, event that you organized today. I think we need to be very grateful to you too for organizing this, uh, this event today. I think it's the right moment to, to start moving into what I would call a, a celebration of reality. No? Because what, what this does is it, it, lands, it lands our concerns. We are all concerned with, uh, the, despite the differences in our approaches and our backgrounds and our disciplines, we seem to be concerned with two things, which are one, knowledge, and the second one is people. So how, how do we know what people do? How do we learn about people? And how can we contribute knowledge to well, hopefully make people's lives better around these topics of architecture and literature and, and, and the way they interrelate? So, so by bringing this down to the earth, let's say to reality, you are already then making both knowledge and uh, people identifiable. They're not just any people or it's not just any knowledge. Each and every one of these projects that we see today is already putting a face on these people. Who are they? What do they do? Where do they live? What matters to them? What do they hope for? What are, what are the problems they're facing? And in that same measure, it brings forth what knowledge are we talking about? What knowledge are they offering us? And what can we offer in return? Uh, I am very happy to, to, to hope that uh, the methodology will allow us to analyze these people and this knowledge using very specific, very concrete instruments, very clear methods. So I think it's, it's, very, it's very interesting to see how the clarification of concepts that the theory group have achieved, the identification of a reality that we're dealing with, and the upcoming 
definition of what instruments and methods can be used to, do, to deal with this uh, will make, make a lot of sense, at least to me. I hope for most of us, they make sense. And they, and they blur these disciplinary boundaries and clarify the object of our, of our efforts. In terms of communication, the only thing I could say is that uh, I realize that by bringing this down to reality, we can also start recognizing that we are communicating with particular individuals, particular groups of people. And it would be beautiful if we can already start establishing more active communications with these people also. As I said again, through their local media, through their governments, through their associations, through their well, whatever forms they have of communicating effectively. So well, I will maybe discuss that with our group and see how we can start promoting that. But you have set, let's say, the foundations for that not to be an abstract discussion anymore. It's, it's already a, a reality. So uh, I think we have to be very grateful for that and, and not only for the beauty of the event, but also for its uh, extremely practical outcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jorge. Yes, Isabella. Please. And Anna afterwards, yes. Um, uh, I will tell with different words what uh, already has been told, which is, I think for everyone, it's very important to step from the theory to the practice, to the reality. And this is what we did finally today. Um, and so, uh, but then what we need to do uh, again is to go from the practice to the theory, to go back to the theory because we are researcher and we need to take this reality uh, and this practice and this experience to a further level of um, conceptualization that can be used for from uh, other others. Um, so maybe uh, I suggest, as I'm a very practical person, uh, I suggest to maybe as an outcome, uh, an output, uh, it would be nice uh, from my point of view to put all these um, experiences that we presented today in a network, in communication between them, and maybe it would be nice to create a map, uh, an interactive map that can be used uh, from our website. And uh, it would be the, the, the way for us to start to travel since we cannot, we cannot travel physically, but we can travel virtually among these realities and um, and so and maybe this map can grow uh, or maybe it can stay like this uh, I don't know if these projects are the final ones or there are I, I, I guess there are more projects that have been selected but uh, of course we cannot talk of I mean, the time was running out but uh, yeah maybe what, what do you think about uh, a map and that can be, uh, I don't know, maybe this map can be released even before the, the, the actual exhibition. And, uh, and then I have another question about the exhibition because it's not clear to me what kind of shape this exhibition will have uh, in Porto, I think. Uh, but this is another question, mm -hmm. so thank you. Maybe Anna uh, would like because you, you ask for something or maybe just uh, Luis and me we can comment briefly on Isabella uh, comment but Anna please feel free to we can, we can it's discuss. maybe kind of related but maybe it's not so I, maybe yeah. I'll just wait till you discuss Isabella's question first I suppose or I can or I can whatever you prefer no just please, please yes, yeah please. I, I I was just going to ask the question I also was thanking Sonia in the private chat for her for her contribution to discussion earlier and to, to the day it's been very interesting um 
Um, I was just wondering, uh, just for my head around where this goes, I um, I think there was discussion before, like, do is there a sense that people would gather and work, not, not physically now, but work in a particular place together? So there's a mix of distance or a mix of countries working on a place? Or is it that the projects continue like is there is there new work to emerge out of this grouping i suppose is is my is what i was wondering and i know covid has thrown all that in the mix and i'm just thinking of from meeting luke pavel's last december at the at the the time a year ago and um, we made a piece of new work together and i was just it was very enjoyable actually having sort of an outsider view on a place that let's say in this case it just happened to be me that knew well and, and we were able to make something new that was enjoyable and i'm just wondering is that the kind of collaboration going forward that there's that we work together or we continue on our own projects or what's the potential i suppose basically well one of the one of the uh, things that we should discuss is on this round table is actually the one that you're posing so how to continue next so of course, uh, maybe just briefly, and Luis could could uh, could uh, uh, join. Of course, uh, uh, what we are doing after the webinar, of course, we are going to uh, we have all the materials. We're going to ask respondents to give us also brief uh, material from their uh, comments uh, on the project, and we are going to pack the whole material um, in a in a booklet, more or less, the one that. Uh, as as we have uh, uh, from the uh, from the first webinar. And, with Angeliki, Angeliki and, and, and Sonia, uh, and we were, were preparing. So basically, uh, uh, we are going to have this. It is also a possibility to, to have a kind of interactive map, as Isabella mentioned uh, before. We should discuss that. It's not always easy to do this uh, in terms of many aspects of, of, of publishing uh, uh, online, but uh, that's, uh, the, that's, the, uh, <clears throat> that's, that's the topic that we can, we can uh, think about it. Of course, uh, 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 many things are changing in between. So the idea of the, of the exhibition, it, as it was, uh, as it was uh, thought uh, to have in Porto uh, in 2020, now it's uh, in a way exhausted. So uh, definitely we can think of uh, making an exhibition, uh, an exhibition of the projects online, uh, the, pro the material that we have online just to to be uh, to be more visible to include all the projects that uh, submitted because now we have to make some kind of uh, some kind of uh, selection because uh, otherwise we're supposed to and it was also an option but we uh, we we didn't go in that way to have a two day webinar <laughs> not one day but it was uh, it was going to be even more exhausting so that's why we, we we just have to pack everything in this eight nine hours that we are basically here today so uh, uh and then uh i think that the porto conference is too far from now to present this project uh, in the in the conference in in october uh, so uh, basically we should promote the, the material on our website we should promote material on some kind of a uh, uh, digital uh, digital uh, presentation we should promote the material as a booklet uh, and I think that in the booklet we have all the information that people could use use it uh, to, 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 to make further uh, further communication uh, among themselves. So uh, and the other aspect is uh, what to do what to do next. Uh, we have uh, Louis mentioned about the definition of mid-sized cities. So actually it's uh, many things that we have to uh, clear. Uh, not just in a working group four, but basically in the cost uh, framework, and then decide uh, how we are going to pursue with the field work. Either uh, 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 if we are going, of course, we are, I'm talking just after COVID situation, not in, in during the COVID situation. Of course, we can be practical, super practical, and super, super, uh, super productive, and uh, let's say. Um, improvise and, and uh, simulate field work online but it's not a field work so uh, that's uh, especially not in the in the context of how the field work is understand in this COVID in this uh, uh, cost cost action uh, having a direct contact with the place not just observing space so
So in that manner, uh, I'm just simplifying, but just to be to, to, to be clear as, as much as possible. In that way, uh, I really I'm not sure at this moment how we are going to continue, and that's why I want to to, to hear even a, a concrete uh, a concrete suggestions about the field work after work. But field work combining, I would be really happy combining the work uh, with other co uh, other uh, working groups, and actually it's really uh, uh, this function quite well. Through the core group, we, we really uh, successfully combined the work of uh, working group one, two, three, and four in this webinar. So uh, I really think that we can also uh, continue in that manner and uh, try to, to establish these links uh, and recognize these links in certain future, future work. Can I add something uh, um, to what uh, uh, Isabella was saying uh, about the, um, asking about the exhibition? Uh, really the webinar took the function of the exhibition. The exhibition was to be a very informal uh, uh, exhibition with panels, with the several projects, with the same materials. So it was a, mainly a device for discussion. This discussion is being done in a way today. So uh, somehow this kind of exhibition doesn't make sense. Uh, I don't know, and we haven't talked about it uh, uh, b between me and Slobodan, but uh, there's here interesting material. Well, th this material is not an end of the writing urban places uh, uh, outputs. It's something that it's very useful for us for the discussions to bring field work and uh, to understand what the people inside the network are doing and to see a lot of different possibilities uh, of field work. Uh, in a way, uh, this could, I would say, and it's something that, uh, that we have been discussing with Slobodan, that to do an exhibition uh, is not just to put some panels on a wall. Uh, to put some panels on a wall is something kind of a process wall. It's to discuss and to be very informal in the way. So that discussion has been done. But as an idea with the materials that we have here, it could be very interesting, not to, to, to all, only to these projects, but mainly if it can grow, uh, to do uh, really something in Oporto or well elsewhere in which these projects are properly curated, which is quite different from doing something for uh, uh, just for the discussion. But that's, I don't know if that would, would somehow bring our energies to something that is not the center of the, of, the, of the work of the network. So in a way, uh, the, the, as Slobodan was saying, to put the, the, all these projects in the site and, and to make it available, it would be uh, great. And we, and we know that uh, uh, instead of the of the idea of the panel to have a site in which films can be displayed and all this fantastic uh, uh, different media that we have in the projects, uh, probably an online exhibition uh, works much more uh, in a way much more interesting and can uh, uh, achieve a much wider audience than uh, than a, an exhibition in in Porto. So uh, uh, that's, uh, I would say, the, 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 the point in which we are uh, dealing. In, in the other issue, just to pass the word, because we, we really want to hear you in this round table, but uh, there's something, uh, we don't know how, how this can be done, but this interconnection between the different working groups is something that I, th I think everybody uh, agrees that it's highly uh, productive in terms of that separating theory from methods, from communication, from field work. Uh, it's somehow it was very useful uh, until now, but now somehow to bring these uh, uh, separate uh, uh, working groups uh, some, uh, maybe makes no sense. But somehow with, with the webinar today, and Klaske was saying that we have, and Georgia also was saying that we have realities, we have cities, we have Limerick, we have Porto. We now have some kind of places and the places doesn't have working groups. They have people that can relate with them. So uh, I know, uh, I know because of the discussions that we have been, uh, 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 um, have, have been um, having in the, in the core group, 
that the structure of this cost action really have this divide of working groups and to change that in terms of the of the processes and the, and the way the the writing driven places cost action would work uh, it maybe it, it will bring some problems and some issues to solve but somehow maybe the the places now could take the lead um, uh, yeah I, I think this is a very a uh, very important point we, we've been discussing a lot. Eh? So for the first year, it was uh, productive to have the um, focus on methods or on on, on theory or on, on, on the field work. And uh, we, we've been discussing before that we could make a shift towards more cross working group collaborations. Uh, and these could be organized thematically or these could be organized uh, along the cities, or perhaps there are different kind of uh, small uh, uh, task groups or something. I would be a bit um, hesitant to organize it through um, countries or cities, because then the whole idea of, of uh, working across Europe and, and sharing experiences would be a bit lost if you would have the, the Porto group or the Limerick group. But somehow uh, this idea of, of moving more, like the, the the working groups on theory, methods, uh, communication, and, and so on, they would remain as a kind of a solid um, framework, but more on the backgrounds and the, the themes, the shared themes between different groups would become much more leading in the, in the next steps. Um, for this uh, interactive map that was uh, suggested by uh, Isabella, I think it's a, it's a very, um, beautiful and productive idea. Of course, we have to see how that could work uh, in terms of, uh, of realization, uh, how you can use the digital means to do so. But such an interactive map, I think, would be a wonderful way to bring this material together and it could be expanded with links and, and material and a link to the websites or, or uh, other material of ongoing projects. And it would allow to bring these different experiences together, no matter how different they are in, um, um, well, in, in how grounded they are in, uh, in, in their own uh, places. Um, what I was also thinking about an exposition, if we would um, curate a kind of exposition from the material we have now from the network for Porto, we could also think of a kind of format that could be presented also in the other cities. So could we think of some kind of exposition, whether it's digital or it, there is an easy print format or something. So that uh, experience from uh, projects in Limerick could also be shared with projects in Riga. Uh, so that there is a kind of, not a traveling exhibition, but a simultaneous exhibition uh, related to the different uh, projects. I thought that might also be a nice uh, um, way of, of thinking of an exhibition that is, um, that is moving. Um, then in terms of the, the, the projects, we've been, of course, now sharing a lot of ongoing work and people are involved already in different, uh, different projects, different experiences. And some of these are really the kind of mid-sized cities like we see with, with uh, uh, Riga or Limerick, but some are uh, almost much more rural, like Eva's uh, uh, example, or they're uh, related in like, Kristen's uh, example is related to, to a capital city. Um, but there is another, uh, so, and we cannot really from the network start new fieldwork projects simply because we don't have the, um, the resources to set up a, a whole project and, and to finance it. Um, but uh, another possibility that we do have since we're all, or many of us are related to educational institutes, um, to conduct uh, uh, educational projects on cities that we choose, we would find interesting. And these could be collaborative projects with students um, that would kind of be, um, well, derive from the network and also be collaborations within the network. So on the one hand, you have the existing projects that are already, well, that we are also presenting now uh, sharing experience about that. And the other thing could be educational projects that we can initiate from the network as a kind of collaborations. 
I might be throwing too much uh, in the air at the same time, but it's uh, just inspired by all the uh, nice presentations today. But that's the idea today. It's really to open up. We don't. We are not deciding anything today. Oh, definitely, we, we should wait for the third <laughs> webinar. <laughs> yeah. uh, we, we should also make some kind of a distance. I'm talking about myself, so <laughs> probably Louis, from the whole whole uh, intensity of communication mm -hmm. and everything in the last month and a half. But actually, it, it started during the summer, so it was. Uh, we feel this kind of a burden because uh, we prepare almost everything to Porto for Porto, and then we su completely supposed to switch the switch the format and uh, way of how we communicate. So that's why it's it's good that now it's ending up, and we are all becoming familiar with. Uh, I'm talking about myself, familiar not just with people, not just like names, and not just like a background, uh, a research background, but also about how people are. Uh, 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 how we understand and what we understand uh, uh, about field work uh, coming from really this kind of big variety of uh, uh, research research background. So in a way, I think that uh, after the, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that the, the, the next webinar is going to be, is going to be very useful. And then after the, this series of three webinars, and so I'm talking like month and a half from now, uh, we are going to have uh, much more, uh, and I expect that we are going to have a regular, a regular core group meetings as we were having all the time during the past uh, past months. So we are going to, let's say, uh, have more clear perspective where to go next. And basically, it's very important for uh, all of us, which are part of the core group, to to disseminate and to communicate and ask and inform uh, uh, other members of the working group. Uh, just uh, to, to, to get a feedback from them. So not, not posing tasks, but basically just setting up like a really loose structure and then uh, then communicate that structure with the with the members from the from the um, uh, other uh, from the working groups. So that's why I think that the next webinar uh, we are all going to be here. I hope plenty of uh, attend uh, of uh, per, of participants today, like 50, which is it's not small amount of people. For Friday, uh, for this kind of confinement that we are all in, so uh, uh, I, I hope that many other people, new new ones, are going to join for the next uh, for the next webinar, and we are going to be even more clear how to how to continue next about the cities, about the topics. Let's see. I'm I'm quite positive about how it could develop. Actually, we can really think because uh, I was much more optimistic. Uh, last spring about all this COVID situation, but reality reality bites. So basically we're all aware that uh, most probably we are going to have this kind of big event. Uh, Porto is going to be probably the, the first one is not to expect something before, but maybe, maybe we could think about uh, to use Porto meeting uh, conference to have a kind of a additional also kickoff, let's say mid-size field work event as well. So why not just to combine that? All of us are going to be there. We have plenty of time to combine with the school. School of Architecture is there. We're uh, the, the organization. Carlos is part of the school. So uh, uh, I'm kind of positive. So why not to to think about the format, the format of, of former develop of of, of, of of further development of field work and working group four, but also communicating communicating one, two, and three. I'm just seeing like that. And the, the idea of uh, this cross collaboration through the shared teams that Klaus can mention is, is, is really nice. So not a massive, massive, um, uh, yes, massive dissemination of information and then small teams that are working on variety of, variety, producing variety of, of case studies. So why not? Yes. <laughs> Isabella, yes. Sorry if there is anybody no, no. else. Um, I would like to go back to what Klaske um, proposed uh, because the idea of the exhibition, it's actually uh, interesting. And if it can be traveling, it would be even more interesting because uh, I guess that every, um, every project, every organization that 
uh, we presented today will be very happy to uh, show uh, this kind of exhibition. Uh, I don't know if we, we should call it exhibition, but some let, let's keep this name for now. And um, for instance, I can imagine in uh, Maranola, in Seminaria, I would be very glad to, to give a little space to, um, it can be a room, it can be something in an in a alley, uh, to, to this kind of idea, so just to, to say, you know, Seminaria is uh, in a big network and uh, these are uh, our friends uh, that do very similar practices. And it would be great for our community to know this. Um, and then I also like the proposal of um, a workshop or um, if I didn't misunderstand what Klaske was proposing, uh, the idea to initiate um, uh, something that can be also maybe traveling. It's, I, I can imagine a workshop in collaboration with the, the universities or the, the students um, uh, in each city and uh, that would be something that we propose in an active way to our network and so may, may I can imagine just every organization to do this workshop to realize it with the tools and the methods that we provide like a guide and then everybody can every organization can uh, give back uh, the outcome to our network and and we can collect uh, the, the 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 fruits of this and see what can come out uh, this would be a uh, something new that we can provide i think mm. I don't know if class I, I just I, I understood well yeah, yeah absolutely this idea of, of workshops and I, I, I also like your idea that we could kind of collectively develop a sort of formats that could then be uh, brought to different places and different members from the network could you know it could be adapted to the specific situation but there is a kind of cost uh, framework behind and then the results can be shared as a beautiful format and the other thing was indeed to uh, connect to education that uh, many of us are teaching design studios for instance and we could also think to pick particular uh, uh, issues and places that link to the to the network but the workshops is of course uh, also uh, very very nice uh, if we could develop a kind of formula for that and uh, Let's, let's test these. Uh, let's test the formula in Porto, maybe. Why not? It's yeah. kind of. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, Kristen, you, 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 you were, you were. Uh, yeah. Thanks. Um, I think I can connect a bit to what both Kwasi and Isabella were saying. In that, uh, one in terms of this sort of idea of a traveling exhibition is something that I've been in a previous project that we discussed but never came to be, but. I think there's a certain accessibility to that, especially in this current situation where, where right now no one can kind of leave home, but I think in a nearer future, we can at least uh, leave our homes and be in our respective cities or countries. And what a traveling exhibition or, uh, yeah, if we call it that, uh, allows you to do is allows this kind of exhibition uh, with that, that can be brought to these different places itself without people actually traveling. And that I mean, in terms of there's, many options if you make an exhibition that functions uh, on the, the format of an A4 or A3 pages. And that can look like something like uh, work in terms of a booklet, as well as something that could go on a wall. And, that, and those two methods allow for a printable version anywhere, but also something that is more dynamic and can grow or be manipulated uh, because um, as, as projects grow and as projects change and as the ideas develop, that pages can be replaced or integrated in different ways and can be adaptable to 
it, like Isabella said, if it was an alleyway or if someone else is presenting this in their um, institution, for example. So I think that um, that's a super interesting idea and um, I think worth uh, exploring. And the second thing I also wanted to say was what, and maybe it's interesting because I found inspiration from it. So I thought I would say that um, specifically for when we were making proposals for this, for the Porto exhibition, we were kind of advised to see if we could tie into any of these um, my 77 minor terms that have been proposed by the previous working working group too, I think. And I think maybe there's a possibility there to use this as to set a theme of some sort. If, if multiple people who are doing field work, who are, are involved in methods can tie into a theme uh, to one of those minor terms, is that a way to kind of create a different sort of a smaller network for collaboration where theory then ties into a method or theory ties into field work? Um, and maybe it's also a way to bring a, a, a tied together theme to um, a classroom situation or a studio situation for students to continue to evolve what this theory can kind of look like and be realized like in the spatial uh, city community in, environments. So for me, I just thought it was inspiring to see how my own work could tie into various themes. And I, and um, yeah, I wonder if that's a way to kind of create different connections and to kind of uh, across the, the working groups. Does anybody want to, oh, Sonia, yeah, please. Fact, I, yeah. uh, as Kristen was talking, I was just about to start typing in the chat. I agree completely um, with the with the idea of a collaboration of members across working group. Um, so maybe this format we did today was very, very good. And if we plan to do some more uh, analysis of field work project, um, I was wondering whether it would be productive to have responders in form of teams comprised of two people where one would be a member of working group two and the other would be a member from the working group three methodology. I think that might give an in-depth analysis of these um, fieldwork projects and maybe also uh, ignite or initiate um, a collaboration and even um, um, in a more productive way of, of doing full research articles and not only two members, maybe even three or four who could then really write um, complete and original research papers. So yeah, I, I agree, a wonderful idea. So. Maybe we can think about that as well. well. Let me just have one thing because when I when I uh, talked about the places, the places is uh, the relation with the places. It doesn't mean that the Portuguese group will do something. The the group in Limerick will do something. It was something that it can be related with workshops, with training schools, and there's a very important role that has to be uh, assumed by the local, uh, dif uh, the different uh, local uh, uh, groups, because with the relation of the stakeholders, with this uh, activation of the institutions, this has to be done with a kind of prox proximity that cannot be done with just cross people from all over without a strong connection. So uh, uh, the, the connection with places to ground the events, but the events will cross people from all the network. It's, it could be done uh, in that way. I Somebody? agree with you, Luis. That's, that's true. You need a lo the local knowledge and, local yeah, that's... and then to bring uh, the, the different experiences together. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. I wondered the thing that was kind of happened as our SEU there, Luke, as well, the thing that happened naturally in person is maybe more difficult to make happen like now. Uh, and some of you have much more sense of the bigger picture in terms of like if those thematic things are to emerge. So um, like, I don't know, I'm here in Ireland. I have no idea whether I'll be allowed to fly out of the country next September. It's not sounding great at all in terms of vaccinations, all that kind of stuff. I think it's wonderful to maybe dream but I can't see how that will happen let's say for me anyway um but uh I'm just wondering is there some kind of 
um, artificial groupings of people that could start to happen. I, I don't know, it's a lot of people, 170 something people. Um, I don't know, like across those, because that sounds great actually, across the different groups um, in terms of those thematics. I don't know, I don't know how that emerges, but. Um, yeah, we have indeed been thinking to have these three uh, themes that were actually in the, the, the previous uh, webinar that were also the leading themes in our initial uh, proposal for the whole action. So this meaningfulness, appropriation and integration to perhaps uh, propose these as, a, as three themes that could people could work on across different groups and across different cities. Um, perhaps also there's other themes emerging and I also like uh, Kristen's suggestion that we have also these 77 minor terms and these are not limited to the 77 but there is a lot of different notions and concepts uh, flying around in the in the network so perhaps there are also different layers of, of connections so you would have maybe three big thematic groups uh, but then there would be groups connected to cities, but there might also be smaller collaborations related to the minor terms. So I think there are a lot of possibilities to interconnect between the different members, but we need to find a, a smart way to do that productively and also flexibly enough. But, um, that's, a, that's an interesting challenge indeed if, if we don't meet in real life, but we can think of some uh, uh, possibilities how to connect across in, in bigger, um, let's say with, with larger perspective, like for the, for the next two years, how do we develop our action, but also in a smaller sense, like, well, like uh, you and Luke made the article together. So there could be small or micro collaborations that have a, a shorter time span as well. Yeah, exciting ideas, how, how these things can link. Oh, when I have a question, when when will be the next uh, webinar? Do Third we of know March. Already? Third of March. Okay. Third of March. It was presented uh, in, in the in the morning. Maybe Lauren could say a bit about. Uh, yes, I, I wanted to, to say the same thing to announce the, the date of the webinar and to invite everybody to this uh, webinar, which is on preparation. Uh, and uh, we really try to make it uh, uh, to link uh, with uh, the other tools and with uh, the webinar of today, which was uh, very uh, mind provoking and with beautiful examples, beautifully explained examples of uh, field work. And in this respect, uh, uh, we discussed. Uh, inside the, the task force that we have uh, organized uh, inside the working group three and I see with the great pleasure that uh, Luke is here uh, together with us. Uh, maybe also Luke you want to say a few words after uh, uh, I speak. Uh, so uh, uh, we thought of uh, certain assignments that could be carried uh, based on the application of uh, methods. So we thought, uh, always thought uh, of methods in terms of uh, the objectives that uh, these methods uh, are uh, ways to um, uh, address and to uh, achieve. Uh, and uh, in terms of uh, applying those methods to the mid-sized uh, uh, European cities. Uh, so we thought of uh, creating uh, these uh, assignments uh, and uh, discuss the possibilities that uh, 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 applying the methods uh, in fieldwork uh, can uh, open to creating new knowledge uh, into our cities from both the perspective of uh, uh, analyzing, studying, understanding the cities, but also from the point of view of transforming the city in a way like uh, what we can do to the city uh, with our methods. Uh, Look, if you please. Yeah, I think you, you said most of it, uh, uh, Lauren. Indeed, we, we first started out with trying to make a, a sort of repository of methods, but then there was a discussion, what is a method, what is another method? Uh, and it would become very, very big. And then we thought, well, let's keep it more playful and open and, and try to think in, in terms of assignments 
and maybe in the future, if we can, if ever we can come together, maybe the end of this year or so, then maybe we can go in the city in groups and, and try to do some of those assignments, practical assignments, and then we have a sort of a, an interesting output. Uh, so yeah. I, I feel already a connection to our uh, 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 imagined workshops that uh, there will be a whole set of assignments that we could uh, we could be using. Now sounds very very interesting and uh, and and as you presented this morning, this would also be a very dynamic uh, um, gathering. The the next webinar as you are. Uh, envisioning these very, very short presentations, right? So it will be uh, uh, quite a, a dynamic format. Yes, as, 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 Lobo, as uh, Luis uh, was uh, saying in the beginning of our uh, round table that uh, working group three uh, promised to explode the repository of methods. Now we promise to explode everybody. Okay, <laughs> it's it's oh okay it's it's exactly it's six p.m. <laughs> the promise to explode everybody. <laughs> yes, of course. What a close the point of view, of course. Yes, what a close, <laughs> what a closure. Uh, big bang. Uh, okay. Uh, 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 yes. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I'm really, I'm really uh, uh, looking forward for the for the next webinar. Uh, not just for the webinar itself, but just as a package of three webinars and uh, all the experience we have from that. I think we should. I think uh, I don't know whether if uh, whether you are planning this kind of uh, discussion roundtable at the end of the webinar for March. Why not? If it's uh, if it's possible, if fits to the to the plan that you have. Uh, uh, maybe it's good because it's a it's, it's it's a place where we can all meet, of course, at the end of the day and everything. But now it's a, it's in a more uh, how to say uh, not not formal not formal discussion. Once uh, the uh, participants which are which are willing to discuss could could exchange experience. Uh, so if if there is a possibility, I would be I would be really looking forward to to meet. Uh, uh, Members from other working groups uh, in the uh, after the after the Pecha Kucha format uh, for, uh, th uh, for for third of Mar March. Yes, I don't know, Luis. Uh, should we close? Yeah. Or hmm? I think it was a long day, <laughs> and he, well, uh, maybe to say that it was a fantastic the participation and the generous contribution of everybody, which was really fantastic. Mm. The the work put on on to for everyone from the presenters, from the the respondents, from the uh, the all the people that mounted the webinar, and Willie is here, and Salma, and uh, everybody in the core group it is uh, a, a huge effort to 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 uh, make this uh, this happen in this so uh, difficult uh, times that we are living but uh, mainly i think that the most important thing is to thank everybody for the 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 wonderful participation for the attendance and for the, the possibility of uh, 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 making this webinar possible. Um, and hopefully it was useful. I, and I know we, we live with a lot of interrogations in our heads, but it's good. <laughs> I think it's, it's good. And uh, mainly is the, to thank everybody for uh, the wonderful day that uh, uh, everybody uh, here um, allowed for uh, for to happen. Slobodan. Yes, um, nothing else to add actually. Just to thank everybody for the enthusiasm. Uh, it's really I was uh, I was also very uh, very nicely surprised with with the enthusiasm of people presenting, but also responding. 
Uh, and uh, of course, as Louis mentioned, uh, as Louis said, um, uh, I see this uh, this webinar as a as a as a way how to uh, how to uh, how how to discuss with myself as well in terms of <laughs> in terms of uh, what to what to what to what to uh, what to do next in, in, uh, within the within the cost within the action and. The, Yes, I like the questions that we opened. So the questions basically are going to lead us to to certain decisions and answers, which I'm really looking forward to. I, I really like to to to, to thank you all uh, you now, which are uh, which really <clears throat> uh, stay with us until the the very end of the today's webinar. And I really I'm really looking forward to the next meeting, uh, which is going to be in a month from now, and uh, wish you to stay safe and to be as much as comfortable as possible in these constraints that we're all living in. And first of all, have a nice weekend. <laughs> ahead of us. This would be the moment to, uh, to raise a glass uh, together and, and thank you and congratulate you also, Slodan and Luis, for organizing this uh, very, very intense and, and uh, very inspiring webinar. Um, so unfortunately, we have to miss that moment, but um, we hope that uh, we will have enough opportunity later to yeah. share a drink together. <laughs> a glass but, of wine. Uh, <laughs> we should make a repository of wine. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> <English. Perhaps. laughs> For some, some meeting. <laughs> no, but really, really thanks. It was uh, to everyone. It was a very, very beautiful day with uh, a lot of food for thought and. Uh, mm. um, material to continue with. And thank you, Willy. Thank uh, you very much, guys. Yeah. Thank you yeah. so much. Fantastic, fantastic. <laughs> thank, <really>. you. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.